first video of a series of uh, videos that we're going to call Rules Wars or Rules Face Off. What's basically I'm going to do, I'm going to have a very simple situation, same for all rule sets, that uh, we're going to resolve. It's going to be basically melee because everybody really likes uh, and is interested in uh, melee procedures uh, because you know cohesions or I mean uh, all the other mechanics uh, will take too much time it's like explaining the rules um, I think in melee you can understand also uh, melee reactions uh, commanders um, it's 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 easier to portray I think than uh, trying to create situations that you can show morale and command but we'll see how it goes and um, we'll get we can we can expand it if you want so here we have a very simple situation of uh, two units uh, of english men at arms and three units of french uh, these are spearmen and these are french men at arms with an attached commander and here with an attached commander now the basing will change according to the rule set now the first uh, video will have sword point and uh, never mind the bill hooks so this is a bill hooks setup um, a company of 12 is a basic uh, company um, in bill hooks and here we have a deep unit a deep unit of two companies together of men at arms and men at arms i'm doing this to show you uh, a little bit of extra uh, things that rules have uh, for sword point we're going to change the basing basically the basing for sword point will be like this because sword point has um, four miniatures on a base so we're gonna uh, have six bases it's the minimum number uh, so this the basis sword point will be a bit bigger so how do we start uh, the situation will be that the French commander will uh, a charge and that will be in all the rules now in bill hooks depending on the quality of the commander he has orders, uh, two orders, one order, three orders. These orders are two actions. So what's going to happen now? The French, we, we consider the French guy, the French commander has two orders. So he will order his troops to charge the English. Now the charge distance uh, for men at arms is six inches and um, they are within six inches. But even if it was more because it can give uh, two actions per order, he could have moved twice and charged. Um, so the captain here will give order first to this uh, spearman to uh, charge the English knights. Why? Because if he charges first and he's in melee, as per the rules for Gallia, he cannot give any other orders when he's in melee except rally troops. So we have first this charge of uh, the spearman and this charge of the French men at arms. So the French charged. Uh, the French men at arms charged the deep unit of two English men at arms, and the French spearmen charged uh, the English men at arms. The third French unit cannot do anything because the commander doesn't have enough commands to give it an order. It has, as we said, only two commands. Uh, so it has to command these troops. So we start melee and uh, we have to roll dice. Now, um, First of all, we have to uh, clarify what the commanders do. De depending on the quality of the commanders, they both, they both inflict uh, their quality in kills. So the commander's quality, so let's say both are two star. Well, let's say the French is two star and the English is one star, will give one kill and two kills. So let's go quickly and check it. So the English get two kills automatically from the commander and the French get one kill. Now, Let's say the French start first because they are charged and they roll for both ranks 1.5 dice per base. So that will be in 12 plus 6, 18. So they will have 18 dice. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So they will have 18 dice uh, for uh, the charge. Now they hit with... Um, a plus four and uh, let's roll and see uh, what is happening what will happen let's focus a bit in the battle now. so the French roll four fives and sixes in order to hit and we have sixes and fives and fours and fours here a lot more sixes very good hit for the French and a five 
so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten possible hits now if a unit is charging in good going it can reroll once so we have the charge we roll the dice i have to tell you that the units have reactions but obviously heavy infantry doesn't have reaction of um shooting before being charged or evading this is for longbowmen for example so we have the hits that we said is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten it's four five and a six and then we have re-rolls if you want now you can re-roll uh, under f uh, specific circumstances and these are your troops are veteran or troops who are attacking or following up re-roll any dice scores of one one so we have three ones here we are attacking the French, these are disregarded, and let's roll and see if we can get another 4, 5 and a 6, and another 3 hits. So this is very good. So we have 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 hits that the English have to defend. Now the English, being heavy infantry, being men at arms, they defend with a plus 3, and the French always. So we need a plus 3 to um, check. So the English save quite a few hits. except three. So this three will be added to the two that were inflicted automatically by the captain. So we'll go three and two. This will be five. So five hits against the English. Now we go to the French, the, the English now who attack and they're attacking now with the support. Though. So this is the case of that we have support for uh, Bill Cook's rules, the support of the first, the front rank of the supporting uh, company. Uh, so they will roll 18 dice plus 6, and that would mean 1.5 again, so it's 6 plus 3, 9. So 18 plus 9 dice. So let's roll the 18 first dice. In English. And we have two sixes, three sixes. Let's remove the ones. They cannot re roll, they didn't charge uh, unless the previous round the round actually so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten possible hits now we have another nine dice from the first rank of the second division and that will be as we said six plus three nine so we'll remove these hits here and let's see now the nine four and five and six and the english roll another three as we said they cannot re-roll once so the english have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen possible hits that the French have to defend with a plus three as well. They're the same type of foot knights, men at arms. So three, four, five, and a six. The French defend well. So we have three hits against the French. That means three and plus one is four so four hits against the english and five against the french uh we'll resolve this mally afterwards uh let um, us do this hand to hand combat as well so here we have spearmen spearmen need uh they have uh, they're rolling uh, one dice per figure they charge so we have uh six and six twelve so the spearmen uh, will roll uh, 12 dice now the spearmen hit again in melee with a plus four, uh, excuse me, with a plus four, um, and um, always everybody hits with a plus four, and let's see. So they have a six, and a six, and a five, and a four, and a four, and a four, and they have a couple of ones that we can reroll. Um, and the roll ones again, so it's nothing. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six possible hits that the English will defend with a plus three, the English men at arms. So the English defend three, so they have three hits. So the English will get um, three hits from the spearmen, and now the English will fight back, we know, with 1.5 dice. There are 12, so we have 18 dice. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. Let's roll 12 first, and then we'll roll the other 6. The English hit with a 4 a plus. So the English have 3. 
four, five, six possible hits from the 12. And let's roll the other four, the other six. And the English have only one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven possible hits against the spearmen who defend this time with a plus four. They are a weaker uh, unit. The English men at arms defend it with a plus three, they defend with a plus four. So they defend quite well. They defend four hits, so three hits against the French spearmen. Let's put it here. So let's see how do we resolve the situation. Now we have a draw here, so the battle continues. You can now we're going to remove um, three bases from the English, and we're going to remove another three from the French. This is good in a way that you understand how many dice you need to roll. I don't like removing miniatures um, in, on the battlefield, but with individual base miniatures, it doesn't look bad. So for the English, first of all, we have five and four. So there is a victor. The victor are the French. First of all, we need to see if the commander survived. So both commanders have to roll the excess hits from three. So that means the English have to roll two dice and the French have to roll one die, and this has not to be, this must not be a one. If it's a one, uh, depending on the quality of the commander, you're going to reduce it by by the ones you rolled, or he's going to get killed if his quality is one, like the English. So the English rolls two, so we said the excess dice from three, and you don't have to roll once. And the English don't roll the one, so uh, they're saved, the commander is saved, and the French the same, and the French roll six and nothing happens. So the commanders stay alive. So let's move uh, from the English, the five, one, two, three, four, five. So the, we suppose we're moving from the back. Supposedly the, fr the front ranks are being uh, covered. And let's move for the French for one. So now the English lost. And we have to do the um, battle resolution and the movement. When a unit loses, it has to take immediately a morale crisis test. And this, what this means, means that you have to roll higher than the kills sustained. But the minimum you can roll is plus five. So here we have five hits, so if the English roll six, we're fine. Now, every unit, depending on the quality, have different die rolls. For example, uh, the cavalry has d6 plus one, because the smaller units is very difficult if they get disarrayed or if they lose the battle to keep their morale uh, intact. Uh, foot units have 2d6, so we're going to roll, the English lost, we're going to roll 2d6 and see what's happened. They have to roll above 5, so they have to roll 6. So the English roll 4, 5, 6, barely survived, and this would mean um, they will continue the melee. Now obviously the rule has a lot of options. I have my workshop uh, videos, you can see in detail the rules for bill hooks. but I haven't reached morale and hand-to-hand -hand combat yet. I will do it because it's a very nice rule set. So um, this is how the situation resolved. Criticism in the rule set. This rule set started for, a sh for a, actually a specific reason. Uh, it started for skirmish and it became so popular that um, uh, players use it for big battles. They're missing some items in league battles, like, um, I would say, a coherent line to support, but this um, is covered by the rare supports if you have a big unit, and um, the ability if you have, uh, uh, um, if you have a, a wider um, frontage than your opponent to outflank him with your um, um, flanking elements and charge him. But in general, this is how it works. I hope I gave you an idea. And now let's go to sword point and see how this works. So let's go to sword point, guys. In sword point, a base of men at arms will be considered like this. Usually I use 40 by 40. It has a strength of four and I put four, four sometimes five, to make it look a bit more closer uh, miniatures. So if we check our um, units now, uh, we have here one, two, three bases. This is the minimum number of bases that you can have for a unit. If you lose a base, the unit becomes unformed and it's basically uh, it's basically what we talked about in DBA, demoralized. It cannot move, it can fight, but negative modifiers. So 
A unit in sword point will probably be six bases. I will look something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, if you consider this as a base. So let's resolve sword point and see how it works. Again, we have the same situation. It's the French commander's um, bound and uh, he decides to charge. Now, he can charge. In sword point, you don't have uh, command points or points in order to uh, give orders. You can move and charge in a group, something you cannot do actually in uh, bell hook. So this group, um, if it's close to each other or it doesn't matter if it's close, if it's not more than one inch, we'll explain why, uh, can charge the English. So let's do the charge and see how this will look. So the French charge as a group, we don't require any points or anything. So sword point, the situation would have been like that. Everybody would charge, even this unit that doesn't have an opponent, it can charge as a group and provide support and later at flank. Something I need to mention is the distance was six inches. Uh, heavy infantry, uh, when they reach within eight inches of their opponent, uh, a proximity rule um, applies. That means that because you know you're charging and your troops are closing ranks, are aware of the enemy, maybe they're doing shield wall, they're moving slower in order to kill, hold the ranks together. So when you are within four inches of an opponent, everybody moves uh, eight inches of an opponent within the eight inch. Um, line, the unit moves four inches, it halves its distance. So that would have meant that probably the French men at arms being at six inches uh, would have moved once four inches and then they would have charged the second time uh, unless the English charged during uh, their turn. But uh, this is how um, the movement is with heavy troops in sword point. Heavy troops are strong but uh, they're cumbersome when they're close to an opponent so they're good of pinning up opponents but they're they're very vulnerable if you don't protect the flanks from fast um, horses cavalry and even mounted knights so now the french attack and we have this situation how it's resolved now for every base we said this is a base fighting for every base fighting of four miniatures we have uh, 2d6 depending on the quality if you are heavy troops it's 2d6 for everybody now the difference in sword point depends on the quality and on the armor and on the weapon you're going to give. So there is a lot of interesting um, possibilities. Uh, you can have your troops having a good defensive position and that's you giving them a shield and not a double-handed weapon that will give them a better defense. Or you're aggressive, you want to attack, you will give your troops a double-handed weapon that will give you an extra die roll or an extra modifier. But at the same time, defensively, you won't have a, a double-handed weapon so you will be more vulnerable in attacks. So sword point has this um, ability to uh, organize the troops according to your strategy and at the same time uh, obviously you have superior troops that hit with the plus three against normal troops or um, you have inferior troops that hit with a plus five so uh, there is a lot of customization in sword point so let's start with simple uh, we have two um, dice for every base so we have two four six bases so the French here let's do the center one will attack with six dice so they're all, they're men at arms, they are not superior, they're normal, they're all with a 4, 5 and a 6. I'm not going to give them double-handed weapons, I give them all partial plate, armor and shield. So they have a commander, a captain, who gives another two dice uh, to uh, the hit. So the, here the difference with um, Bill Hook's rules is that uh, the captain gives uh, here uh, two extra dice or three extra dice in bullet hooks looks it uh, does two automatic hits so we roll we need to hit with a four five and a six and sword point here we have uh one two three four five possible hits uh if you're a veteran uh you can re-roll your ones so four possible hits that the, the the english have to defend the english have a partial plate armor of plus five defense and the shield I opted for a shield and that would mean they defend with a four five and a six if i gave the french a double-handed weapon they could have got they would have gained a plus two modifier in the hits that means they would have had um uh, in the defense value of the opponent that means that many of the hits would have been an automatic kill so so the english defend with a four five and a six so the english get only almost defend everything and they only get uh, one hit let's put it here now the French attack with the same number of dice because this is the number of, of bases fighting. So three, uh, two, four, six, two, four, six, plus the commander eight. They hit with a four, five, and a six. Yeah, uh, the English, excuse me. Uh, they hit with a four, five, and a six, 
and the English have two possible hits. Uh, they don't have any other here, so the French will defend with a plus four as well, and they miss both, and there will be two hits against the French. Now, we'll do this melee here as well. We have, again, six dice, uh, because the guys are fighting six bases, but there is no commander, the English hit. Let me give you... Uh, a plus uh, two, the, the English have a double-handed weapon and the Spears have a long, a, a large shield. The Spears have light armor, so they hit, they defend with a plus six, but with a large shield, they get a minus two, so they defend with plus four. The English men at arms have a partial plate armor, but they have a double-handed weapon that gives a plus two to the defense value of the opponent. So let's see. So the English roll and the English roll four, five, and six, so two hits. Again, if they were veteran, they would roll the ones. So one, two, three, four possible hits for uh, the English. Now, the Spearman, Pavises, let's say, have light armor, so they defend with a plus six, and they have a large shield, so they would have defended with a plus four. But because the English have a double-handed weapon, they get a plus two modifier to the defense die, so they need a six to defend. So they fail both. So they have four hits. <clears throat> and uh, they fight back the English with uh, six dice again. Um, did I do this or didn't I? No, yes, they uh, fight back the English with six dice. They hit with a four, five, and a six. They have two possible hits. But the English now have a defense value of five. They don't have a shield. They have only a partial plate armor. So they defend one. They lose one. So one hit against uh, the English. Now, what I uh, want to tell you is um, now we will have, now whether we finished, uh, we don't, there's no base removed because the base strength is four. So there's no base removed. You have to have four hits in order to remove a base. So these hits will be disregarded, but we need to do the final um, battle resolution. So we have the English have in here, the English have two hits and the, uh, the French have two hits and the English one hit. Now the English get um, a plus one for being a close order infantry, the same with the French. Both get the depth bonus because they are deep units. They haven't, in order to get the depth bonus, your, your, your uh, uh, last rank has to have more than half. So if you remove two bases from the six bases, you lose the depth bonus. So both get the depth bonus. There is no captain, there's no commander, there's nothing here, so um, they don't get any other bonuses. So we have two, three, four, and two, one, two, three. So it's four here for the English, three for the French, so a victory for one for the English. That means continue fighting. If um, the English lost, won by more, would have been very different. But I'll show you here how it works, because here we have four and one, and how it works here. So the French... The English had four hits. They inflicted four hits, so the French have four. And the French roll uh, inflicted one hit to the English. So the English get a plus one for depth bonus. No, they don't have a depth bonus because they are three. They don't have the depth bonus, but they get for a close order infantry, and the French get for a close order infantry. So both of them get the bonuses. Now, four and five, and this is two, so the, the English are victorious by three. Now that would have meant would have meant being pushed back disordered, but the French have a line of battle. That is very important sword point, being a coherent line supporting each other than less than one inch. So to continue, the French lost by three, but the bat line of battle will divide this by two, and this will be 1.5 rounded up. It will go two. Now this doesn't change the result, but let's give you an example. If the French lost uh, by five and that would mean uh, get it, taking a break test, divided by 2 would have mean 2.5, that means rounded up 3, and that would have saved them, they would have only had to get pushed back and become disordered. So here we have 2, the English win by 2 after the battle resolution, so the French will be pu pushed back 4 inches, and the English will follow up, and um, they will become discouraged, and um, they will continue fighting.
So the Indians have to follow back, it's compulsory. So immediately you see how the balance of power changing in this game with the pushbacks. Immediately the English now are fighting on their own two units. In the next melee they will be in trouble because they don't have anything to share if they lose. The French will. I forgot to tell you that the French lost by one so there was no point of, of, of talking about the line of battle. But if the French lost by six, let's say, from the English and because they have a line of battle that they are flanked by two units that means they could have divided the result by three. Six means automatic break, and uh, this would have meant divided by three is going to be two. So this would be continue fighting. See how important the line of battle is in sword point when you divide the result according to the units that are supporting you. So in this situation now, continue, immediately the French are pushed back. A different melee continues here, but there is no more line of battle. What you have here, because the two units, the French and the English, are... Uh, within one inch and they are edge to edge um, with each other, both units will become um, both units will become nervous and they will have a minus one in their hand to hand combat. Now, what the French can do here, the French can turn the same as with uh, bill hooks. The French can turn uh, and in two rounds, if the melee continues like this, they can attack the English in the flank. The same actually have, can be done in bill hooks. Um, you give an order and you can attack your opponent and you know will and charge him so this is how sword point works um the line of battle is a very very nice concept it's not very uh, common i mean you have it also also dba with the minus one of uh, the overlaps but in sword point is very very important to keep a coherent line the 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 main units the the strong knight units are very cumbersome when they come close together. They move very slowly. They move four inches when they are within eight inches of each other. If they want to turn, they have to lose 15% uh, of the move, 10%, so they move three inches. Um, so they are very cumbersome. So they attack there, they fight each other. And the best strategy with sword point is to try to unflank and attack your opponent that you've pinned in the center because this... Um, disadvantages are not applied to cavalry and uh, mounted knights so guys this is sword point i hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, first rules face-off uh, next one will have uh, days of knights and uh, army of god uh, or dba we'll decide but one of it will be days of knights another brilliant rule set so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and uh, bye bye